Parrots are the third most popular pet in the world, but the number one most rehomed. Help us put an end to this. Listen to the Parrot Training Podcast, brought to you by Bird Tricks. Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Parrot Training Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Womack, here with my beautiful wife, Jamie Womack, and we are from Bird Tricks, where today we're going to be talking about the myth that free-flighted birds will destroy your house. Is it true? Is it false? We're going to dive into why it might be true, but also why it should be false. Ooh, that was good. Right. And when we say free-flighted <laughs> birds, we mean fully flighted. This doesn't mean that you have an outdoor free-flighted bird that's trained to fly outside by any means. This is just a fully flighted, capable bird that can fly around your home. A lot of the reasons that we hear that people clip their birds is because they don't want their house to be completely and utterly destroyed. And this is some sort of myth that's been going around. Not that it's not true for some people who maybe just let their birds have full reign of the household all the time and wait for it to get destroyed before they either put them back in the cages or don't. Uh, but there should be a certain harmony to it, a certain balance that makes it so that this is not an ongoing talked about subject where people need to clip their birds to keep their house looking nice. And I think this jumps back to the birdie bullying that's going on online with people that really push the agenda of like, hey, you're a crappy bird owner if you don't let your bird out for four hours a day or whatever that magic number may be. And although that might be the case for that individual, with their individual bird, that doesn't mean that that applies to you. If you only can give quality interaction with your bird for 30 minutes a day, man, that's so much better than having a four hour interaction where you're chasing the bird around because he's eating your house apart. So it really comes down to failure points on the owner, not necessarily the bird being a bad bird and destroying the house. Yeah, you have to remember to give things that the bird wants. So all the all the things that work with birds are manipulation and trying to figure out how to convince that bird to do or not do what you want or don't want it to do. And what I mean by that is if you notice that it's going to town on your wood trim, then that means that you should be offering more hardwoods or maybe that's more of a softwood in your case. Try finding toys that emulate what your bird likes to chew on or what you're finding it trying to get into and emulate that within its cage or environment or a play stand. We have huge trees around that have some fun toys hanging off of them. Try to recreate that and give them something they can chew because it might mean that you're just not providing enough stuff for them to do. It also ties back to our podcast on the sleeper cage. If your bird's not getting enough sleep or it's spring and your bird's extra hormonal, it's going to be going around trying to find spots in your house to destroy, to build a nest. So the, the key to this is the same answer I give when people say, hey, my bird bit me, what do I do next? And those of you that have followed us for a while know that it's avoid getting the bite from in the first place. So if your bird is starting to become destructive after 26 minutes of being out of the cage, maybe it's time to put them back after 25 minutes. So you want to see that the problem's about to happen, anticipate it because you are paying attention to your bird while he's out of the cage instead of letting him loose. And then you're correcting the situation prior to becoming a problem. Another solution is maybe you don't want to put him in the cage after that amount of time you could plan to do a formal training session. So just before the bird's going to be showing these destructive tendencies, bring him over to a tea stand, uh, wear him out with some mentally and physically stimulating behaviors or exercises. So it could be, uh, you know, new target training, spin, wave, maybe you're working on retrieve or going through a hoop or whatever kind of trick you could, or battery died. Darn it. I lost my train of thought. That was a really good thought. Uh, but the basis is, is that if your bird's flying around and getting up to places that it's not supposed to be high up where you can't reach, that just means that you need to do some recall training or flight training and make it less fun. The more, <laughs> the more things that you can put on cue that your bird actually enjoys, the, the more you can take kind of the fun out of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, this is something I go through a lot with free flight students and they challenge me every single time. They're like, Hey, Dave, my bird's flying up to the cupboards and he won't come down. I don't want him to do that. So I say, great. So tomorrow morning, we're going to start your bird on the cupboard. And they're like, what? I don't want like, him to no. go there. And they really, like, everybody has fought me on it. The same thing when we actually get to go outdoors. They're like, Dave, my bird's landing in the tree. I'm like, great. Tomorrow morning, we're starting the bird in the tree. And if you watched our video on Luke from Australia, that was one of, that was the breakthrough moment for, for Sammy, for his macaw, is that 
she didn't have the skills, which is why she was going to the tree. For Mia, another blue and gold macaw, she was going to the tops of the cupboards, possibly because she could avoid training or because maybe she was hormonal. Or she was scared of things. She was definitely scared of a lot of things. So it's hard to diagnose the exact reason, but even with those three reasons we just listed, you can start your bird up on the cupboards and recall that bird down, which kind of takes that exploring fun away from them, makes it a trick, and it makes it so that if your bird goes up there, it could be telling you that it wants a training session because it knows you're likely to recall it down. Um, but it also is going to make it so it's less likely to go up there if you never cue it to go up there. Yeah, and another example of this is that I recently had a consultation with a couple who said that their bird was just obsessed with this shiny dish holder thing that they had that's like dries the dishes afterwards after they wash them and that the bird just loves to go and hang on it and play on it and stand on it and i was just kind of like okay well can it get hurt doing that and they were like no i said can the bird damage that by going on it no we just don't really want him there and i was just kind of like well have you ever just let him stay there until it becomes boring to him versus rushing over there i mean like get off of there we don't want you on it and they were just like, actually, no. I'm like, I think if you just let it get boring and you let the mystery go away by letting him just hang, like, okay, hang out on it. You can't damage it. It can't hurt you. Have at it until you realize that this is really not that fun, not that cool. And the treat over here is a lot better. But if you don't let them ever get it out of their system, as far as something in that retrospect, I've even heard about it with birds and faucets and things of that nature where you just like, okay, check it out, get it out of your system. I'll let you hang out there. Uh, then it's not a mystery anymore. And it's not this forbidden place that the human doesn't want you to know about. Uh, because the more that you say, no, 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 don't do that. No, 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 don't go there. No, 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 don't touch that. Uh, the more they're gonna want to, because I think that's just nature. <laughs> yeah, and another thing that Jamie's bringing up here that, that lends itself towards this idea is that your bird may have inadvertently trained you that every time it goes to these destructive places, you come interact with it. Yes. So if the plus reinforcement, if you watch our family friendly course, you know what I'm talking about. If the plus reinforcement is you now interacting, the bird is going to make the cue going to the cupboard to destroy it so that the behavior is you coming to get the bird and the consequence is a plus reinforcement of getting to hang out with you. So you may have accidentally trained your bird already to go to the cupboards. So don't worry if we go start the bird and train the bird and just have a different behavior because that bird has trained you. Another example of this is a, a example with Mia, the free flight blue and gold as well. Um, we were working with her and getting her over fear of new things. And so what we did was a variation on our power pause technique where you'd, I would walk with Mia till she showed the first signs of fear and then I would pause and wait for a sign of calm. Well, what the sign of calm happened to be, she shook her head because she was just kind of content and ruffling. So I clicked, we walked away, gave her a treat. So she got two plus reinforcements. Long story short, fast forward a month, she started to shake her head anytime she wanted to be taken away from something. <laughs> so it had accidentally been put on cue. You know, it was a calm way of doing it versus just freaking out and trying to get away. But that behavior had actually been become trained for us from the bird's perspective. That's really cool. The other uh, example I wanted to bring up was in One Day Miracles. Do you remember Gandalf, that African gray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And basically the this lamp. owner, yes, this owner had a really cool, but it was flat. It was a flat lamp, so it was easy for the bird to land on. Just picture like a glass plate hanging from the ceiling. And this African gray was just obsessive about that place mm -hmm. for some reason. And I think it was because again, anytime he landed on it, she immediately took him off. So what she started doing <laughs> was she started putting a cloth there or a towel or something that the bird was scared of. What she was actually doing was slowly desensitizing the bird and making the bird more brave on accident because eventually it would overcome its fear of whatever scary object she put on there because the reward of being there was so much greater and worthwhile. And so she started having to find scarier and scarier objects to put up there. And we just laughed because we're like, wow, you did a great job desensitizing your bird. <laughs> and she was another one that was very resistant. She's like, I don't want my bird to go up there. And the, here's another way to look at it. Do you not want your bird to go there? Or do you want your bird to be able to get off of there when you ask? There's yeah, a big difference. It's more like you don't want your bird to stay there versus mm -hmm. just go up there. Um, but the other thing is that people accidentally inadvertently 
teach their birds kind of like you were saying with attention to go there and then come back on cue so you have to be really mindful about how you go about the training but i don't believe that it's because a bird is fully flighted and capable of flying that it destroys houses i think that that is a mistake on the humans point you're just not understanding parrot behavior you're encouraging it somehow you're letting things become more reinforcing than what you can offer and during hormone season i totally get it because it's very hard to overcome that instinctive nature for them to just want to nest but that's not usually in places that are as high up Except it's usually <laughs> down low uh, where they're they're finding their nesting points so I do get it and it can become more complicated, but really look at the incompatible behaviors that you can do. Try to make it more worthwhile. And if that's kind of staggering out your bird's meals into instead of two main meals, maybe you do six small meals throughout the day so that you constantly have something to work with and constantly have places that your bird is allowed to be. Um, like on our play stands, we have bowls and stuff. So if I, you know, if my bird was getting into mischief, I could cue him to come back to this play area and give a short meal there. I could go give a shower or a bath. That discourages my birds from flying because they're wet and heavy and they usually want to naturally preen. Just find ways that are working with nature that are convincing your bird that, hey, this is the better avenue to take. But the complicated thing with birds is that you're constantly having to find ways to get them to want to make the decision you want them to make. And that can be hard because they're incredibly intelligent and they feel like they're always two steps ahead, but it is possible. If you want a great resource to reference what we're talking about, uh, our family friendly parrot formula is really our foundational training course of everything you need to know with your pet bird. And it, the goal was for us to produce that course so that you didn't have to hire anybody, us included. You would have all the tools at your disposal to understand why your bird is doing the behavior that it is but simplified into the easiest in 12 step program as we put it. But it's a, a super easy, straightforward and clear path to help you understand the concepts that we're talking about on just a much deeper level. Yeah. And those can be found over at birdtrickstore.com. And we also have some consultation packages available to where if you get that, it comes with the Family Friendly Parrot Formula course so that we can even help you take it a step further if that's something that you'd like to do. Yeah, it's really a tool to be able to help you self-analyze what your bird's doing and why. Because once you understand why, you can understand how to steer it this way. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for watching. If you're getting value out of this, uh, please consider sharing it with a friend or family member or somebody that you know that is having a similar problem with their pet bird. Because it is our mission to save parrots one person at a time. And through you being able to help get this information out there, you're helping us make a bigger impact on parrots all over the world. Yeah.